Coach Rastetter, I think our last interview was when you were state runner-up to the Grand Falcons. That is true. Right? Yeah, that's 2010? Nine? Twelve. Twelve? Ten? Sounds right. Somewhere. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> it's in that time frame. Somewhere. Yes. Okay. For a while. Between here and there, you took like this mega leap. All right? Mega leap in life. You went from teaching and coaching to being a full-time Division three coach for, for, for Otterbein. Correct. Columbus area. Do you still live in Lexington? Uh, yeah, I still live in Mansfield. I make the commute every day. How um, far? Uh, it's it's only about 50 minutes, but you know my wife is a teacher at Lexington still, um, and uh, my kids are still in school there, so uh, I don't mind the drive. A little bit of me time, you know. So it's uh, good good for recruiting time too. So yeah, I, I make that drive usually six days a week. John Clark has like an over two hour drive at Sacred Heart. Did you know that? I did not. From know Providence. That. See, that makes me feel better then. So I wanted you, I just, I want you to feel better about yourself. I do, I do feel better now. <laughs> now you're so, okay? Yeah, that's Stop it's all whining now. and complaining, it's all right? Now. I don't complain. Yeah, I mean, because, uh, you know, yesterday I drove out to um, Lehigh to watch the first day of national preps because we're, we're recruiting a kid that was wrestling 220 out there. And seven hour drive there. Watch wrestling all day, seven hour drive back here so that I could be up here today to watch one of the guys that we're recruiting. So, you know, if you're not in the wrestling room, you're out there recruiting. So, driving's just part of it. You did this when you were like over 40, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I was, uh, I, I was 40, I gotta think how old I am now. I was 43 years old when I made the change. So, it wasn't something that I really ever expected to do. I'd Nobody had, does that. I had 25 years, 24 years of coaching in at the high school level at that point. How many years teaching? Uh, 21. So like now you have to like do because they're not they're a private school. A private school, so yeah, a lot of changes as far as you know retirement goes. I still have that retirement build up, and uh, you know now I'm I'm working on the private part of the retirement too. Luckily, my wife didn't think I was nuts, and uh, I just see the, the big change was the last five years I was at Lexington. I was in an administrator role as a dean of students at the junior high. And it wasn't a role that I enjoyed. I didn't like being the bad guy every day. You wanted to teach kids. I wanted to teach kids. Yeah. And uh, I just wasn't happy doing that. And, you know, this opportunity came up. I didn't really expect to get the chance to do the opportunity. But um, it's been a lot of fun. We've had fun. Did they reinstate or was it? It was yeah. a reinstate. Because some, some are just like from scratch. Yeah. Tiffin like never had wrestling, I don't think. Whereas where you guys reinstated. Yeah, they had it, they had it from like 59 until 74. And then they dropped it at the end of the 74 season. They hadn't had it since then. Um, and then they reinstated. They gave me a full year to recruit. So, you know, they hired me in October. And then I had that whole wrestling season just to get out and recruit and start to get things together. And then we started competing that second year. So this is our fourth year. We're, we're going into our fourth regional tournament. We just had our first senior night um, last week, our first actual set of four-year seniors coming through the program. So. Yeah, kind of, kind of crazy. But. You kicked the door down early with an All American, though. Like, you know, it didn't take you guys long. Was it your second or third season? Uh, second season. Second season, you had All American, right? Yeah. And now Drew's ranked number one in the country right now. Got a got a shot at being a national champ. Um, you know, he also wrestled for me in high school, so it's kind of cool. You know, he, his, his brother's a two time All American too yeah. for, at Duke. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, Jake. Yeah, Jacob wrestled for me too. So Drew was my last state champion as a high school coach. And he could be my first national champion as a college coach, you know, if, if everything goes as planned here the next few weeks. So, um, so that's been kind of nice having that experience of having some kids who wrestle for me in high school, you know, come with me to the college level too. Um, it, it, it's, it's it's definitely been it's been, definitely been different, but it's been a lot of fun. Okay, if you can have Caspers, you want Caspers all day. Yeah. Not every kid's a, a Casper brother, right. right? A Casper brother's multiple-time All-American. Well, one's a multiple-time All-American. One's got a chance at a national title as a D3 All-American. Right. Those are the guys you want. Right. But what are you, you know, you can't get those guys all the time. Who are you looking for when you come to the SBC? I know you can't name names. What are you looking for in an athlete out here? You know, first and foremost, it's the academic side of it. You know, for a school like Otterbein, the first thing we ask, how are the grades? You know, uh, they've got a 3.2 GPA or better, uh, 22 or better on their ACT, then that's going to peak you, our you interest. Can't even, you can't even talk to someone with a 20 and a you know, 2.5. We can, but realistically speaking, our financial aid packages are probably not going to make it where they would really want to you know, be. You it'd know, be difficult. for. It'd, it'd be, be a hard sell for them. It, depending on, on what their family situation is, where their fast for money would be. You know, if they could get government money from that end, then that, you know, sometimes we can kind of meet things in the middle. So there's some wiggle room for you There's guys. some wiggle room. So, yeah. you know, we've got guys on the team right now that are on, that were high 2.9, you know, 2.8, 2 17, 18, 
ACTs, and you know they figured out how to make it work financially. But it's not an easy thing to do. So we at least start at that point, academically speaking. And then the next stage is you know bringing them in for the visit and get to know what kind of kid they are and what they're involved in outside of wrestling. You know, are they just a wrestling kid or do they play multiple sports? Do they like to compete? Because at the D3 level, you know, since we're not offering them any money to, to, to wrestle, they've really got to want, they, they've really got to love to compete. You know, they, they've got to want to be able to be there and do this for another four years. And, and um, you know, the attrition rate's pretty high. It's a lot higher than what I anticipated it to be because kids get there and, you know, they're not a starter or, you know, a kid that maybe they beat in high school is working a little bit harder and they're better than them. They just don't want to put that work in again. So it, it, it's different, but, you know, we're looking, that first year we were just looking for kids. So we brought in all kinds of kids. We had over 30 kids come in the first year, but it wasn't a good mix of kids. It wasn't the right mix of kids that we wanted. Now we feel like we've really figured out what kind of kid will work well at Otterbein and what kind of kid we really want to be able to have within the program. And uh, I think the results are, are kind of, you know, proving that that's going in a better direction. I think we were ranked 13th in the country in the team rankings here not too long ago. So, you know, not only are we having some individual recognition, but we're having some team recognition. And, uh, you know, we just got a, we got a really fun and uh, a hardworking group of boys right now. And we're just going to continue to try to build off of it. All right. Last thing, what's next for you guys? We've got regionals next week. So um, it's, it's, we're, we it's have, March Madness. It's March Madness, brother. So we got regionals, um, you know, 19 teams, they only take the top three to the Jeez, NCAA geez. tournament. You know, we've got we've got a tough regional. we got a lot of guys that are ranked in, in uh, you know, where we're good. We're going to have to battle because we're in weight classes that are pretty deep. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to make the NCAA tournament in Division Three a lot more so than what people realize. So, you know, hopefully we get, you know, some guys through and get, you know, more, more guys on the podium this year and uh, keep using that as a tool, a tool to attract, you know, more kids to the program. All right. You got anything else for me? You're awesome. Hey. Well, hey, thanks. I'm gonna, my wife's waiting for me, and uh, hey. I got to go tell her. I'm going to let her know. You do more for wrestling than anybody that I know, so you know, we just appreciate you, Zip. All right. Hey, thanks for the time. Good luck to you guys in the regional, all right? Thanks, brother.